Good morning, Beach Beacon family. Thank you for joining us for our Wednesday morning time together in the Word and in prayer. Uh, this morning, I want to share with you and uh, all the people that I've ever met. I don't think I've ever met a person who has set out on a journey to become a failure. In other words, when you talk to someone about uh, what they see as their plans for their life, I've never had anybody look at me and say, well, you know, I think I'm just going to set out to be a failure. No, there's something in the innermost part of us that seeks to be successful. But the question is, when all is said and done, whose eyes have I been successful in? Listen to the words of Dr. Bob Jones. He's the founder of Bob Jones University. He says success, and he's going to give us a definition for it. He says success is finding God's will for your life and then doing it. Think about that again. Success is finding God's will for your life and doing it. Uh, you know, someday we'll stand before Jesus Christ. And I would much rather have my life to be a success in his eyes than the success in anyone else's eyes that I've ever met. Our verse for today is found in the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, 4th Gospel, chapter 6 and verse 38. Join, take your scriptures as I will, find the Gospel of John, verse, uh, chapter 6 and verse 38. These are the words of Jesus Christ. He says, For I have come down from heaven. In other words, Jesus says, uh, This is my mission. Uh, this is what I have come to be successful at. He says, I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Now, if you stop thinking about that for a second, what is Jesus saying? Jesus says, I haven't come to earth to do the will that I have. It's rather the will of the Father who has sent me here. So how would Jesus define success in his life? By doing the will of the Father. Then we see Jesus, take your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, you're going to go back Matthew, Mark, Luke 1 Gospel, chapter 22. We see this, at, uh, we see this in the Garden of Gethsemane, Luke chapter 22, verse 42. Jesus says these words, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. He's talking about the cup of suffering. He's talking about the cup uh, that he will drink of that includes my sin and your sins and the sins of the world. And he says to the Father, he says, if you are willing. Now, who is he putting the, uh, the responsibility on? He says, if this be your will for me. In Luke chapter 22, he says, Father, if you're willing, remove this cup. Take it away from me that I don't have to drink from it. Then he closes Luke 22, 42 with this portion of the verse. He says, if you're willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but your will be done. Uh, think about it for a second. If we let that be a part of our prayer life, as we seek God's will in a particular matter, uh, saying, you know, Father, this is my will in this matter. This is what I think you would have me to do. But I surrender my will to your will. Now, Jesus knows that by surrendering to the Father's will, this cup, he will have to drink. I want to kind of think about a word today, and that word is triangulate. It's a big word with a small definition. Triangulate means that I can take uh, two known points and find an unknown point. I may have more than two, maybe two or more known points, and find an unknown point. Let's, let's give an illustration here. Let's say that you have uh, uh, two families that live on opposite ends of uh, the state of Virginia, like Crawford and Amber J.C. Reverend and Liam, live on one end of the state of Virginia. They often sign their letters off the southwest Ellsworth, and we live in the eastern part of Virginia. So let's say we were to talk together as, as family and say, listen, let's get together for a vacation, and uh, let's kind of find a place in the middle. We could take their address, we could take our address, and by triangulating, we can find a place that is in the middle. Uh, what I want to do today is to tell you that there's three things that we can triangulate, three points that we know that will help us to find an unknown point sometime, and that is the will of God. The first known point we have, or if, if we're going to triangulate for God's purpose for our life, is the first thing we have to know that, remember there are known points and unknown points. Well, the known point, the first one, and there's three of them, is we must know the Savior. We must know this uh the Savior. The initial step in finding the will of God for our lives is to be sure that we know Christ, His Son, as our Lord and Savior. Listen to the words of J.J. Packer. He says, once you become aware that the main business that you are here for is, now get ready, J.J. Packer says, once we come to the point of understanding that the business that we are put here for 
First of all is to know God. He doesn't start with God's will. He says, first and utmost, we must know God. He goes on to say, once you become aware that the main business that you are here for is to know God, most of life's problems fall into place of their own accord. In other words, what he's saying is, he's saying, once we know God, once we know the Father through a relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ, everything else in our lives seems to find its right place and purpose. Matthew 6.33 tells us, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So what does is, what is Matthew 6.33 tell us? It says, Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the will of God. Seek ye first the will of God. Everything else will find its proper purpose. That's exactly what J.J. Packer is saying. Uh, we can't know the will of God if we don't know Jesus Christ, our Savior. Take your Bibles, turn it with me, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and verse 14. Go to the right of the Gospel of John. Go past the book of Romans and Acts, get to 1 Corinthians. I found it in my scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and verse 14. He says, but a natural man, does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. Now, I want to stop and teach there just a little bit. Now, what is Paul saying here? He says the natural man does not accept the Spirit, uh, the things of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit that indwells the life of the believer of Jesus Christ is the connection between us and the Father. It's the connection between us and the Father. That's what Paul is saying here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The natural man can't understand the things of God because there's not an interpreter in his life, the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2.14 goes on to say, But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. Now, once we say, okay, if I want to know the will of God, whether it is in a particular issue or as part of my life, the first thing I must do is be sure that I know the Savior. That puts the Holy Spirit in me. It makes a connection between the Father and Him and me so that I can understand the will of God in my life. The second thing is know the working of the Holy Spirit. In other words, we say we have to know the Savior who puts the Holy Spirit in us. Then we have to understand the working of the Holy Spirit. I'd say of the three parts of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, the Spirit is probably the least known, most misunderstood part of the Trinity. We, we know a lot about the Father. We know a lot about the Son. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, our knowledge base is very limited. We must be under the control of the Holy Spirit. Uh, look at Ephesians. Go to the right of 2 Corinthians. Get into Galatians, and then find Ephesians will be right after that. We must be under the control of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5, 17 and 18, the Apostle Paul pins these words. He says, So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And then he gives us kind of an illustration using uh, uh, wine as an illustrator. He says, do not be drunk with wine. That is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit. Um, he says, listen, he says, if wine is going to control you, then the Holy Spirit can't. So the second thing we have to be sure is that we are under the control of the Holy Spirit. We're listening to him, and when he speaks, he, uh, we obey him. I actually have times in my life when the Holy Spirit will speak to me about something, and if I don't do it, I almost hear this whisper in my ear, are you going to be obedient? Are you going to do what I told, told you to do? So first, if we want to understand the will of God, we must know the Savior. Second, we must understand the working of the Holy Spirit. Let's go to one more verse. It's John chapter 16, verse 13. Go back to the left. The Gospel of John chapter, I'm looking it up in my scripture, John chapter 16, in verse number 13, John pins these words, but he says, But when he, then he defines who the he is, but when he, the Spirit of truth, Holy Spirit, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but he will speak. Let me get my pages apart here. He will speak whatever he hears. He, he will speak, he will disclose to you what is to come. Now listen to what John says here about the Holy Spirit. He says, he first of all, he says, He will guide you into all truth. Secondly, he says, for he will not speak as a, of, of his own initiative. He's not speaking what he 
what he wants to speak. He's just simply translating from the Father to us what he wants us to hear. And he says that will be true. So let's take that triangulation concept, some points that we know to find a point that we may be searching for. We say, first of all, we must know the Savior. Secondly, we, we must know the working of the Holy Spirit, not the Holy Spirit. We, the emphasis there is not on knowing the Holy Spirit, it's knowing the working of the Holy Spirit, understanding the working of the Holy Spirit in the life of me as a believer in Jesus Christ. And I think John chapter 16, verse 13 tells us perfectly what that is. He's going to be a guide to us. He's going to be able to take what the Father says and put it into our lives, whisper it into our lives. Lastly, the point that we know is, or need to know, is we need to know the Scripture. We need to know the Scripture. Uh, God will never lead one of his followers to do anything that is contrary to his word. So if you say the will of God for my life is this, and it runs contrary to scripture, then uh, that's not the will of God. God's will and God's uh, for our lives and the scriptures will always line up. So we must know the Savior, we must know the working of the Holy Spirit, and we must know the scriptures. Look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 16. Colossians chapter 3. Go back to the right. Get past the book of 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians. Almost there. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. He says, let the word of Christ dwell within you. If you notice, if you're following along, I left the word out. It says, Colossians 3.16 says, let the word of Christ richly dwell in you. In other words, just not dwell in you abide in you, live in you. He says, let it live in you richly. So if you're seeking the will of God, and that may be in a particular decision, or that might be uh, for a purpose for your life, uh, let me challenge you that that may be out there as an unknown for you. But if you know those other three things, you can triangulate the will of God. If you know, if you know Jesus, okay, know the working of the Holy Spirit, and you know the scriptures. Uh, George Truitt was a former pastor at First Baptist Church, Dallas. He was a pastor there for over 40 years. Listen to what he says. He says, to know the will of God is the greatest knowledge. To do the will of God is the greatest achievement. Did you hear that? To know the will of God is the greatest knowledge. To do the will of God is the greatest achievement. Take your Bibles, one last set of verses, turn back to the Gospel of John, John chapter 19. John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, last gospel before we head into, uh, into uh, Acts. John chapter 16. I'm sorry, John chapter 19. These are words that are spoken by Jesus on the cross at Calvary. Now listen to these. Starting in verse number 28, John 19, 28 through 30. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things had already been accomplished to fulfill the scripture, said, I am thirsty. A jar of, full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of sour wine upon a branch and brought it up to his mouth. Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, what's the next three words? It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Notice Jesus doesn't bow his head and give up his spirit until everything the Father is sending to earth to accomplish has been accomplished. Go back and look at our very first verse. John 6.38, Jesus says, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Then go back to John chapter 19. When Jesus is finished, everything the Father had sent him to earth to do, when Jesus is finished doing that, then and only then does he say those three words, It is finished. What a joy it would be for us to be able to stand in the presence of our Savior someday and say those same three words. It is finished. Everything that you call me to do, everything that your will was for me here on this earth, it has been done. Then, and only then, can we look into the Father's face and say, it is finished. We have some updates for our prayer requests from yesterday, some praises, and uh, for things that we had prayed about yesterday that God did. Uh, during the day. So uh, take your pencils out, jot these down real quick. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I think as I look out the window of the pastor's office here, I see the sunshine for the, uh, for the first time in several days. So we give you praise for that. We thank you this morning that 
As I was sitting in the Florida room doing my devotion time, I was reminded it is you who calls the sun to rise. It is you that has hidden the stars away during the day. So, Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Your faithfulness demonstrated to us, even in nature, that this morning we didn't have to sit in a chair in the Florida room and wonder if the sun was going to rise. We can rely upon your faithfulness that it will. So as we bring these prayer requests to you, we're relying upon your faithfulness, Lord, to answer each and every one in your way. Father, we begin this morning by giving you praise. Father, we praise you that as we have been praying for Diane's dear friend, Lamise's mom, Bobby, uh, Father, who has had experiences some dizziness, has experienced some health issues, and the doctors could not quite put their finger on what was causing it. Father, we thank you that you give wisdom and knowledge and answer our prayers through the physicians and nurses at Norfolk General that realized it was simply a matter of readjusting your blood pressure medication. And once they did that, uh, Father, she is now clear-minded. She's smiling, happier than she has been in months. All she has to do now is uh, just get her strength back and she'll be able to come home. So we thank you for answering that prayer. Uh, Father, we thank you that we had lifted up Shella Bolenbach yesterday as uh, she had taken a tumble and had torn the retina in one of her eyes. And uh, Father, it was, uh, too, it was so severe that when she went into the ophthalmologist, uh, he said, we need to do surgery tomorrow. We can't put this off, but we give you praise. I got a call from Mike yesterday afternoon that she came through the surgery well. She's at home resting. We just pray your mighty hand would be placed upon this retina and this eye. Her vision would be completely restored. Father, we give you praise this morning once again that Cheryl Whitmore is cancer-free. Uh, Father, we give you praise this morning that her blood work came back looking great. We give you praise this morning also that she's going to be able to spend some time with her grandson, Brian. We give you praise for that this morning. Father, there are a number of appointments that are coming up on June the 26th. Uh, Cheryl will have her next appointment with her oncologist. Then on June 29th, she'll begin her next round of chemo. Then the next biopsy is actually going to be July the 15th. So we pray this biopsy would come back totally clear, no signs of cancer at all. Father, we claim this in the proper name of Jesus Christ. Father, we know that William, as he's going through his immunotherapy treatments, that causes some issues with his stomach. So, Father, we're praying, Lord, that you place your hand upon that stomach. You would give the doctors wisdom in how to navigate this issue, the side effect of the immunotherapy, and that his stomach would be healed. Father, strengthen this dear sweet couple. Give them stamina. Give them patience. And I thank you, Lord, for their faith they're showing and demonstrating before our church family. Father, we pray for Pastor Matt Prutwell. We give you praise this morning that he's come through this surgery so well. My father, when I talked to him on Monday, he just sounded fantastic. Uh, all the uh, He's not having any pain. He's backing off of his pain medications. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for our church family that ministered to them last week by supplying them meals. And Father, we just thank for the churches that are coming on board after us that will help during this time. Father, we give you praise this morning that uh, they told Matt that it would probably be about 12 weeks before he could become, uh, that he could start any type of rehab or physical therapy. And Father, he feels like that the way he's making progress now, that time may be cut in half. And also, Father, he's asking that in the midst of all of this, he's spending a lot of time in the Word, he's spending a lot of time reading, and Father, just a strong sense of your presence during this time is what they have asked for. Father, we thank you for the good spiritual conversation we had with Diane's dad yesterday. Father, he still not accepted Christ. But Father, I thank you that those doors of sharing the gospel with him are still open. Be with Diane today as she goes down and has two doctor's appointments to take him to today that they would all go well. Father, we give you praise this morning for what you're doing in Ben and Tricia Chapel's life and their family life. Father, we had begun to pray for what you had burdened their heart with. It was time to sell their home in Virginia Beach and move to Moyoc for a little bit bigger home that would meet the needs of their growing family. So, Father, we pray, Lord, this morning and give you praise for what you have done. Father, to think that as we prayed about that, the very first couple or family that came through that house made a full price offer for their home and was willing to pay half the closing cost. The house in Moyoc that they had put a contract on, they had gone back and forth about some issues, but the contract for the house in Moyoc has been accepted. So we pray for a couple of things. First of all, they're going to close on both houses on July 14th at the same time, so we pray that would go smoothly. But also the home inspections for the home in Moyoc and the home here in Virginia Beach, there would be no issues and no concerns over that. 
Father, we continue to pray, Lord, this morning that you would go before John and Dolores Hensler. Father, I thank you that we had a chance to check with Dolores yesterday, and John is recovering. His appetite is returning, which means his strength will soon return. So, Father, I pray that you would put your hand upon this arm that has been injured, that you would protect it from any infection. And, Father, it would just heal perfectly. You'd restore a perfect uh, movement and uh, restore this arm and hand back to the normal thing that it was. Father, we pray, Lord, for strength for John and Dolores during this time. Pray, Lord, for Dolores' knee, that you would give the doctors wisdom and how to address the pain and suffering that is there. Father, we pray for Diane Smithson. We continue to lift up her mom to you, Sally. Father, today the CT results should come back today, so we're praying, Lord, as the doctors look at that. And once again, I believe that you call us to pray big prayers because we serve a big God. And Father, we're praying that this tumor would be gone. It would not even be there anymore. The radiation has been used by your hand to destroy it and remove it. We also pray for an easing of her pain and suffering. to strengthen Diane and her family during this time. Thank you that Diane uh, is able to be home for Bailey, their grandson's graduation. And Father, he feels you calling him into an apprenticeship somewhere. And you know the desires of his heart. So Father, I pray that you, we would be bold enough to pray that you would provide a, an apprenticeship for him that would be free. And Father, that it would be something that, uh, Father, you have gifted him and talented him to do. Father, we pray for Jerry Chapel's mom, Alberta, this morning. We thank you that she's been able to be moved from the hospital into the nursing home. And he, uh, Jerry's asked us to pray specifically for several things. First of all, that the injections would alleviate the pain that she's having in her knee. Uh, they have talked about replacing this knee, and because of her age and physical health, they have decided not to do that. So we're trusting you, Lord, to take away this pain that's in this knee. We'd also pray, Lord, that you would restore her mind. Father, that you would give her a sound, a sound mind. Father, I know that's a big prayer request, Lord, but I pray it in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. You'd also be with the doctors and the families and give them wisdom in her care and strength and jury during this time as he's away from his mind. Father Janet has asked us to pray for several things. Uh, first of all, Lord, she is uh, going to teach one more year. She has enough time to retire, and she has decided she's going to teach one more year. So, Father, I pray, and it's been our prayer, that this will be the very best year in her over 30 years of teaching. Just bless her, give her favor in her last year. Father, you know the need that she has to sell her mom's villa and also her home in Kempsville for what you have called her to do. So, Father, we're praying that you would bring the right buyer at the right price at the right time for both of these homes. Father, we'd also pray for her transition to West Virginia after her retirement so she can be with her son and his family and her uh, grandchild also. She's also asked that we pray, Lord, for a good church home for her there. We know her heart of ministry and service here within Beach Beacon, of how, how often she has stepped up to serve within our church body. She desires to continue doing that there. So I know that you already have uh, the perfect virus for these homes. You already have the transition, Father, to West Virginia, the timing for that. So we're just praying you also we show her the church of your choosing there too. But also pray you would give her your favor and some legal concerns. She would be her righteous judge and defender. Father, uh, Angie, who works, Angie White, who works at CBN, has asked for prayer for several of their, uh, several of her co-workers that have lost family members. We think of Mary Smith, whose husband passed away. For Tracy Swagger, whose father-in-law passed away. For Hilda Bryan, whose sister passed away. Father, it's my prayer that all of those who have stepped into eternity have surrendered their hearts to Jesus Christ, which means we will see them again. And where we see them there, There'll be no pain, no suffering, no virus, no separation. Father, we'd also pray for Steve Johnson that you continue, Lord, to help him to recover from this virus, that you heal him totally. We give you praise that CBN is not going to have to lay anybody off. Father, that's because of the faithful giving of those who have chosen to support this ministry. Also, that you would be with uh, Pat and Gordon Roberts and give them wisdom as they navigate and direct CBN during this time. Father, as always, we close by, by uh, praying for our nation. Uh, Father, even looking at the newspaper today, you see uh, the chaos, Father, that is here. There are those who are seeking justice. There are those who are seeking peace. Father, only those two things, you touched my heart today, justice and peace will only be brought about through the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
It takes away your mighty hand of wrath and rather replaces it with a hand of mercy. So I pray you would be with our leaders, Father, as they navigate our na nation through this time. It would be my plea to you this morning that as a nation we would turn to you for wisdom instead of man. Man's wisdom will always fall short and will always lead us astray eventually. But your wisdom will lead us home. So, Father, we're trusting you to heal our nation as only you can. Once again this morning, Lord, we have entrusted many things into your hands. I was thinking today, we entrusted Shella Bolenbacher to you yesterday. Her surgery went just fine. We've entrusted homes to be sold, and they have been sold. We have entrusted those who are battling cancer to you, and they are cancer-free. So, Father, there's nothing we have asked of your hand this morning that you cannot do. So, Father, we give you praise for that. Bless the rest of this day. My prayer this morning during my own prayer time that was that my heart, my eyes, my ears, my mind would be focused upon those that you may send across my path today that may need to hear the gospel. We've asked all these things in the matchless and powerful name of Jesus Christ whose authority would come in and not our own. Amen. Uh, just a couple of reminders. Uh, we're going to finish up tomorrow. It will be our last daily devotion until probably the Wednesday, the last Wednesday in June. Uh, Diane and I will be going off for some vacation time, and we'll pick those up when we come back. But it's been a joy for us to prepare and share with you in, in the morning just a simple scripture, a group of scriptures, and a thought for the day, and then to be able to pray over our prayer request. Our deacons and yoke fellows will be meeting tonight. We have been faithful to meet every Wednesday night uh, during this time to, uh, to study the scriptures together and to pray together. So I want you to know that we're praying for you. If you have a prayer request or any way that we can minister to you, please don't hesitate to call the church office. This number is 430-0798. Get in touch with either Ms. Donna or myself or Christy when she's on campus, and we'll be glad to add you to the prayer list or either help meet that need that you may have. Uh, our high school graduates will be honored this Sunday as a portion of our service. Then next Sunday, we will have one of our local Gideons will be here to speak to us. That's our Acts 1-8 ministry focus. You're going to notice that there's a quite a few more Bibles in the cross this Sunday. As the money counters uh, tell us uh, how many Bibles have been purchased as you give to this Acts 1-8 ministry focus, uh, then Paul and others set that cross up every Sunday, and uh, they, they put those Bibles in that cross. And speaking of that, I want to just take a moment to thank everybody who is here on campus setting up. You know, if I was... Um, Many of our church members come to service on campus here and they see everything in place. Well, that just doesn't happen by chance. There are those who are on campus between 8.30 and 9 o'clock for our 11 o'clock service. They're getting the sound and the stage and the parking and the offering buckets and everything put into place so that when you come on campus, when we come on campus, everything is set. So I want to thank those this morning who are giving of their time to be here so early so that we can continue on Sunday morning to worship together. God has been very faithful and very blessed, very blessing to us by giving us great weather. Each and every Sunday we've been outside. This last Sunday was, was a perfect example because by the time we got everything indoors, it began to rain. God held the rain off till that time. Well, as you think about triangulating the will of God in your life, whether that be a decision or whether that be a purpose, think about the things that you need to know to find what you're looking for. God bless you and have a good day. We'll see you in the morning as we finish up the week together.